Jodie Foster won a Golden Globe for this film. It got another nomination for its lead actor, Taha Rahim, but no Oscar nominations. Let's find out why. Let's talk about The Mauritanian. Hey everybody, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It, and welcome to my standalone spoiler-free review for the film The Mauritanian. This is in uh, select theaters now, um, and you can get it as well for your home viewing wherever you uh, get videos these days at home. And then also, it will be out in the UK April 1st. I watched this movie about a week ago, but wanted to wait and see, okay, well, I got some Golden Globes love. Let's see if it gets any Oscar nominations before I do the review video. It did not, um, so nothing to really talk about there. But uh, if you are new to Dan Reviews It, welcome to my channel. Thank you for finding this video. Please consider uh, subscribing or liking or sharing this video. Uh, that all helps the channel. And uh, comment below as well. Are you surprised this movie didn't get any uh, love at at the Oscars this year, are you surprised that Jodie Foster won for a supporting actress in the Golden Globes? You know, lots lots of things to consider here. But uh, first, let's talk about the uh, the basis of the movie. So this is based on a 2015 memoir called Guantanamo Diary, and uh, basically, it's a uh, biography. Uh, an autobiography, I should say, because it's by Mahamadou uh, uh, Awid uh, Sh Shahali uh, himself, who is played by Taha Rahim in this film. It's, it's basically, you know, his movie. And he uh, was captured by the U.S. government and is, you know, currently in Guantanamo Bay in this film. Uh, and he's in a detention camp there without ever being charged with a crime. Um, so... Jodie Foster plays uh, Nancy Hollander, who is a defense attorney and comes to his aid along with her uh, associate, Terry Duncan, played by Shailene Woodley. And uh, together they figure out how to best go about, um, you know, getting justice for this man. Um, and uh, also in this movie is Benedict Cumberbatch as Lieutenant uh, Stuart Couch. Uh, and he um, has, you know, some some issues of his own with this uh, situation with Muhammadu himself, um, and so he's a part of the mix as well. So let's talk about the positives of this movie first. Um, number one, this is uh, Jodie Foster's best performance in uh, quite a while. I just recently rewatched uh, Silence of the Lambs because we're going to be doing a review video about that for the 30th anniversary. Uh, or I guess we did the, the video already. It's already up because um, the anniversary was last month. But so I recently watched that movie. And, you know, that maybe is her, her greatest performance. I also think she's great in The Accused. Um, but look, in the last 10, 15 years, she has not really been in top of mind. She's certainly an A-list name, but she doesn't really uh, bring Blockbuster to the table anymore. And, um, you know, I, I think this is probably her best performance in a long time, maybe since – Flight Plan or Panic Room, you know, one of those thrillers that she was uh, really into in the early 2000s. But now, you know, this is a, a really um, nice dramatic role she can sink her teeth to into. And I think she was as surprised as anybody at the Globes, if you could tell by her speech, um, that she even won that. She was like, I can't even believe I'm part of the conversation anymore, da 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 da, -da. Um, And, you know, she's done a couple of smaller roles that I really enjoyed in the last few years, but nothing um, quite this meaty. You know, this is a nice role for her. But the true standout to me in this movie is Rahim. Um, he is, I mean, he's excellent as Muhammadu. He really is. And and I, I don't really know him from too much, if, if anything. I'm not sure if I've seen him before. Um, but he really is just giving it all here in, in some very, very intense sequences. We see, you know, some of the, um, you know, methods that were being used on him. Uh, to try and get information, to try and coerce a guilty plea for something that he still has not been charged with. Um, and, and, you know, it is very infuriating to watch knowing that this, you know, this happened. It's it's really scary stuff. Um, but that sort of actually brings me to some of the negatives of the movie. Uh, this was directed by Kevin McDonald, who is um, known mostly for documentaries. He did a Bob Marley documentary. He did a Whitney Houston one a couple of years ago. And he actually won a uh, an, an Academy Award years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, for um, one of his documentaries about the, some athletes. So mostly in the documentary realm. But he's done other things as well. He's done some you know dramatic films as well. And uh, what I think he, he 
failed at here. And some of this movie and its directing is is good, but what he's created, I think, and maybe the screenplay is partly to blame too. It's a, it's hard to tell, but um, the mood of this movie, it's definitely intense at times, and we're we're like, oh yeah, this is horrible for this dude, you know. Although it doesn't quite take the um, the perspective that. 100% yes this guy had nothing to do with 9/11 da, 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 da. it doesn't it doesn't quite veer enough in that direction i think but at the same time it's also giving us some of these um really intense torture scenes and everything but um it, it's intense only in like the thought process of oh god if this happened to me this would be horrible it it maybe doesn't go far enough in showing the the true torture and the true, you know, horribleness of this experience um, for Mohamedou, you know, this, this decades plus in in the slammer for, you know, a crime he's never even been charged with. Um, it, it's more psychological, I think, as as we're watching as it is you're showing us. And there is a, a moment of, OK, you know, look, you don't have to necessarily show all the horrible torture and stuff. But I think because of the way it's shot, it keeps us at a little bit of a safer distance. Um, and I think this is the kind of movie where you do want to be fully uncomfortable. Like, I feel like a movie like D Zero Dark Thirty, um, which that first scene, most of the movie is not torture-based, but there's, like, the, the opening scene is, like, horrible. And it's like, oh, my God, what am I getting into with this movie? And I don't think there was enough of that in this. I don't think it was urgent enough uh, for this character. And then my other issues with it really are just that the Shailene Woodley character is just sort of there. I mean, you know, she, she's fine. Woodley always does a good performance in, in pretty much all of her films, but um, she's just sort of, her character has not been written very well. There's not much to her. Uh, maybe it's one of the cases where this character didn't even exist in real life. I'm not sure, but she's not written very well here. And then the other thing is the Cumberbatch character, um, his Deep American Southern accent sort of just threw me every time. I think they would have done better to cast someone that was a little more unknown or someone who actually is, you know, uh, Southern or, you know, from the U.S. at least. Just because we're so used to Cumberbatch doing his normal, you know, British language uh, and, and dialogue that he's just – it just seems out of place. And some people can can flow between the dialogues effortlessly there's a lot of them you know kate winslet um hugh laurie i think you know uh, between house and the doing his his uk stuff he's great at it but i don't know there's something about this performance from cumberbatch i just feel like uh they should have either gotten somebody that we know more um in this type of a character uh, you know, and off the top of my head, like going back to Zero Dark Thirty again, you know, Coach Taylor from uh, Friday Night Lights, I think would have been great here. Uh, there's a lot of people that would have been great here, but I, I just it took me out every time. He's not in that many scenes, so it, it's okay. But, um, but really, this is a a sheer, you know, uh, acting class for people with Tahir Tahar, Tahar Rahim. I I really thought he did a great job here, and I think Jodie Foster did great as well. So why didn't they make nominations uh, for these two at the Oscars? Well, my, my one theory is because in supporting, um, there's only so much love to go around, whereas I believe in the Golden Globes, they have the, the comedy and the drama in two different categories. So Borat, the girl in Borat got an Oscar nomination that maybe would have gone to Jodie Foster if they were only doing dramatic performances. That's that's one guess. Uh, and as for Best Actor, I don't know. It's just a pretty stacked field. You know, I, I was glad to see the ones that did get nominated. So maybe Tahar Rahim uh, just just didn't wasn't up to snuff, they thought, with uh, the rest of these people. But I don't know. I, I thought it was a really, really good performance. Best performance of the movie for sure. Um, overall, I think this is an engaging movie, uh, but I, I do think it's a little safe, uh, and I think some of the casting choices were a little questionable. Um, but I think they, they, they did at least provoke the anger in me of the situation, um, even without showing all, all the, the vicious details. So maybe it did enough of its job. Uh, I'm going to leave the Mauritanian with a B. 
Uh, it is a little bit of a bummer that, that Jodie Foster didn't get, uh, you know, yet another great accolade uh, for this performance because, you know, she, she is definitely one of our great actresses of the last uh, 30 years or so. All right, well, that is going to do it. Thank you for watching this video. We'll have uh, more on the way. Now that the Oscar nominations have been announced, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, Oscar-nominated movies that I haven't gotten to yet on the channel, and there is a small handful of them, so we'll tackle those um, and uh, some other things along the way. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.